Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I've got a super quick video for you today on how to calculate your heart rate zones and what to do in each of those heart rate zones to help you become a faster, better, stronger runner. Right guys, here we go. Heart rate training is such an important part of running. And yeah, let me know down in the comments. Do you do much heart rate training in your running? Or yeah, maybe that's why you're here, to learn to do it a little bit better. If you've got any questions about it, yeah, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you there to help you out with your running. First things first, there are two ways of calculating heart rate zones. The first one, which you may have seen, is to get yourself into a professional scientific lab and have some technicians take you through that. You get yourselves on the treadmill, do some ramp tests, you can get your VO2 max done and your heart rate zones done at the same time. I've done this a few times, it's quite expensive and yeah, I'll put some links down below if you want to get that sort of thing. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to say that's how you can do it. We're going to calculate this all with all stuff you've got at home. So first things first, you need to calculate three different bits of data. You need to calculate your maximum heart rate. You need to calculate your resting heart rate. And then from that, you can calculate your heart rate reserve. Calculate your maximum heart rate. That is to do a basic calculation. This is the safest way to do it. It's to take the number 220 and subtract your age from that, and then you're gonna get a number. Yes, it's not the most accurate way to do it, but it's gonna give you a there or thereabouts calculation. So for me, that gives me a number of 183 of my maximum heart rate. In reality, I think it's a wee bit higher than that, but we'll use that number for this video. Now you've got your maximum heart rate, you want to find out what your resting heart rate is. Now a lot of modern fancy garments and whatever watch that you use will give you a resting heart rate figure. So have a check into your watch and see what that is. If you don't have a watch like that, or you want to do it an alternative way, then when you get up in the morning, just take your pulse for a minute and do this for three or four days in a row and just see how many beats you are. First thing in the morning is when you're gonna be the most relaxed. And so then you'll get a figure for your resting heart rate. So now we've got those two bits of data, we wanna calculate the heart rate reserve, which is the amount of basically heart rate capacity that you've got available to you when you're doing your running. So simply maximum heart rate minus resting heart rate is gonna give you your heart rate reserve. So for me, 183 maximum heart rate minus 47 gives 136. So that is my heart rate reserve and then we're going to take that number forward to now calculate our zone. So starting out we're going to start with zone one. So this is an active recovery zone. So we might go out for a very super easy jog to help with our recovery. All we're doing here is promoting blood flow through our legs. Not adding any fitness, not doing anything other than promoting that blood flow to get rid of the sort of the lactic acid buildup and things like that. So this is 50 to 60% of our heart rate reserve. So how we calculate this is, I'm gonna take my number of 136 heart rate reserve, divide that by 100 and times it by 50 because we're looking for that 50% and then add back on our resting heart rate. And that gives me a figure of 115 for the lower end of zone one. And then looking up the top end of zone one, 60% is 136 divided by 100 times by 60 for the 60%. Adding on our resting heart rate again of 47 gives 129. So now I've got my zone one heart rate is anywhere between 115 and 129. So moving on to zone two, this is all about boosting our endurance, helping us to run further for longer. And it's also a fat burning zone as well. So yeah, this is 60 to 70%. We've already got our 60% figure from the zone one calculation, so we only need to work out 70% here. So it's 136 divided by 100 times by 70 is gonna give me a figure of 143 beats a minute. So for me, I've now got my zone two, 129 to 143. And yeah, I'm not gonna take you through every single calculation here, but I'll put it up on the screen now what each one is. So zone one, 50 to 60%. Zone two, 60 to 70%. Zone three, 70 to 80%. Zone four, 80 to 90%. And zone five is 90 to 100%. So take those calculations through and then you're gonna get your five zones ready to go. 
touching on what the other three zones we haven't talked about all mean. So zone three is essentially where we do, uh, do some of our steady state runs and this helps really improve our stamina. And this should be at the higher end of zone three. The little bit between sort of zone two and the middle of zone three is a bit of a gray area, not, not an awful lot happens there. So high end zone three, steady state runs really improve your stamina. Zone four really helps boost what's called our lactate threshold, in helping us to run faster, real sort of big speed for longer. So we're gonna be doing some reps tend to be in this sort of zone and anywhere between about three up to about 10 minutes, you might be doing some reps in this zone and you tend to have around about sort of a two to three minute recovery after that. And then zone five, don't want to be spending too much time here, but we might be doing some really, really fast running here. And this is really gonna to help to improve our out and out, all out speed. For endurance runners, it's not overly important to do too much time here, but it helps. We all want to be running a little bit faster, get that turnover, and it can help with our form to spend some time here as well. So yeah, this will be reps of anywhere from sort of 30 seconds up to a minute, maybe up to two minutes you might be spending in this zone. Uh, again, and recovery is about the same sort of amount. <laughs> A couple of other things that are really good to have a chat about now is the accuracy of heart rate data. If you're relying, if your watch has got a heart rate monitor built into it, it's probably not going to be very good. Most manufacturers say if you want heart rate data, you've got to get yourself a chest strap. Now what I recommend is something like the Wahoo Ticker, really good quality chest strap, around about 35 pounds. If you have a Garmin watch, it can be worth investing in what's called a Garmin HRM Run. This one here, you get a lot of extra data, a lot of running dynamics, which can be quite cool. If you're someone that doesn't really like chest straps, then I'd recommend something like a Polar OH1, which is uh, this strap here, and that just goes around your arm. And from those, if you're using those, you're gonna get some really much more meaningful heart rate data. So avoid using your watch for accuracy and stick to a chest strap or that arm strap there. And a final couple of points. There is a general rule kind of brought about by this guy, Matt Fitzgerald, in his book, 80-20 Running. I'll put a link to this down in the notes below. That says you want to be spent as endurance athletes, endurance runners, you want to be spending around about 80% of your week in zone two and zone one heart rate, and about 20% of your week in three, four, and five, and split up your running like that. It really helps, and that's what I've in, in, put in all of my training to get down to the PBs that I've managed to achieve. So yeah, I really recommend checking out this book if you want to be reading a little bit more about heart rate data. And one final note, I'll also link, there are some websites that can calculate these things for you automatically just by working out those three bits of data. So I'll put some links down below, but those websites can come and go a little bit. So yeah, I just wanted to, in this video, have a fail safe way of being able to calculate your heart rate zones. <laughs> And that's a wrap guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please smash that like button. And yeah, let me know how your training is going down in the comments. If you've got time, check out some of our lovely merch, our running gear. We make the best running hats in the business on the website. I'll link to those down below. We've got buffs and all sorts of stuff to help you with your running becoming a better runner. And I hope you will with all the data and everything we've put into this video to improve your heart rate training. So that's enough for me rabbiting on i look forward to hearing from you down below and yeah that's it good luck happy training keep working hard and keep on of course getting it done we'll see you in the next one